And now let's get back to Doc. Thank you, Yuki. We are just about set to go. Cameron sold out. Oh, 11,000 are here. And the Duke Blue Devil, the devil with the blue dress on, is ready for Notre Dame. And we'll have the starting lineups in a moment. College basketball is brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. By Michelob Drive. Bold taste with no aftertaste. Nick Drive refreshes completely. By State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by U.S. Navy. You and the Navy. Full speed ahead. Back at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Let's check the starting lineups. First for the Fighting Irish, your freshman, Monty Williams, starts at one forward position. The best player on the floor for the Irish, Lafonso Ellis. Power forward at the other, a 6'9 sophomore. Keith Robinson, a good scorer, has to come up big in big games. He's had some terrific standout performances, but not against the better team. Joe Frederick, in three years against Duke, has had big games every time. And Tim Singleton is the man defensively. They hope to hold down the passing of Bobby Hurley. Coach Digger Phelps in his 19th year as the head coach of Notre Dame and he considers this a vitally important game and well he should as he's up against one of the best Greg Kubek an all-purpose forward does a lot of the little things that help you win Christian Leitner a rising star of college basketball at 611 Ala Abdul Nabi a powerful inside player born in Egypt he's having a good season so is senior Phil Henderson Duke's leading scorer with over 18 a game and the whip cracker, the man who quarterbacks Duke, is the freshman Bobby Hurley. There is Mike Krzyzewski, head coach of the Blue Devils, his team winners of 14 of their last 15 games. They've won 53 straight games at home against non-conference opponents. All ACC officials, Dick Paparo, Rick Hartzell, and Duke Edsel. Paparo will up the ball to start the game last year at Notre Dame. Duke had a very impressive performance. It really kicked off their drive to the Final Four. They beat Notre Dame 102 to 80. Duke has won four of the last five. Tip goes to Tim Singleton, junior backcourt player. Amani Williams, Notre Dame and Green with the ball. They try to get it low, and Abdel Nabi steals the ball. Crowd noise intense here in Cameron as driving to the hoop is Henderson. A fight for the rebound is taken down by the freshman. Monty Williams leads the break. It is four on one. Hurley back to defend as Singleton pulls up. And Tim Singleton, who barely averages two and a half shots a game, gets the first points of the day. That was a four on one break. It's good defense by Hurley. Singleton hit a tough shot. Now Robinson intercepts Hurley's attempted pass to Abdul Nabi. The Arrows are going to go as fast as they can all game long, which might be tough in this very, very warm building. It's almost 80 outside. It's got to be over 90 in here with very high humidity. Got a very heavy rainfall outside. Down low, the ball goes to Lafonso Ellis. Notre Dame's leading scorer slams one down, and the Irish get off to a 4 0 lead. Christian late in the time. Henderson fires. Oh. Broke and he was just inside the line. It's a two-point field goal. Irish by two. Blue Devils on defense now. Hurley, Hawking, Singleton. Williams pulling up. Nice lead to Ellis. And somehow, Monty Williams gets the loose ball. And Abdul Nabi comes down the defensive board. Loses it to Ellis. Blocked by Abdul Nabi. Taken by Leitner. And here comes Hurley. Duke has to get more physical underneath. They can't give him that many shots. Good foul inside as Hurley dished to Abdul Nabi, who was on his way up to slam down two points. Now he'll have to get him from the line if he can. Frederick stepped in on the foul that time. That's his first first of the game. 18:35 to play in the first half. You think this heat is going to take a toll as the game wears on? No, because I think both benches are deep. There'll be many substitutions, along with the commercial timeouts, will be a piece of cake. At his practice yesterday, Mike Krzyzewski, the Duke coach, three separate times told his players, I want you drinking a lot of Gatorade and fluids tonight and tomorrow morning. He said, if you dry up during the game, it's too late to replenish. Well, give me half that case of Gatorade they're going to send to Don, huh? <laughs> well, that's, what his, that's what his choice of beverage is at this point. <laughs> you can take a boy out of the city, but they can't take the knife out of his hand. <laughs> 
Man-to-man <laughs> -man defense. Monty Williams goes up. Loose ball knocked away by Williams, picked up by Henderson, and Duke comes down the run. Over to Hurley, defended by Frederick. And Bobby Hurley slows the three, and Duke takes the lead for the first time, 7-4. to four. Hurley's coming off a sensational performance against Clemson the other night. He had 18 points and 11 assists. Duke on a 7-0 run, but now Singleton answers with his second field goal. They're leaving. They're going to give him the ball to shoot more. The Duke people did not feel he was a scoring threat. Got away with a walk that time. No. Paparo was right on top of it. Good call. 17.47 to play in the first half. Kind of like a combination down low on defense for the Duke. Bonzo Ellis puts Leitner in the air, and Ellis can't get the roll. Knocked around. Robinson down with it. Loose ball to Hurley, and here's a three-on-three -three break. Lead goes to Henderson, and Henderson, with a good move, goes to the hoop, and he was fouled on the play by Tim Singleton. Nice head and shoulders fake by Phil Henderson in motion, which threw a shoulder block into him, finishing up a fast break on the left side of the court. Robert Bricky, a standout senior player who's missed the last eight games with a knee injury, is back in the Duke lineup. Robert Bricky last year in Seattle, in the final four, he went down injured. If he didn't get hurt, I personally think Duke would have been a national champ. He's the best athlete on the team by far. That's an interesting point. He was injured, as you know, Al, in the semifinal game at Seattle by, against Seton Hall in the Pirates ended up beating Duke and going out of the final game, only to lose to Michigan. But Duke's season did turn at that point. Ricky is really glue. He's just a terrific all-around player and leader. Now Henderson at the line as Duke is holding to an 8-6 lead. And Henderson makes it 9-6. Duke started the season with a 3-2 record. Now has won 14 of its last 15 for a 17 and 3 mark. The Irish are 11 and 6. Rejected by Leitner. You bet your bottom dollar, Don, that Diggett said to Tim Singleton, you better shoot or you're going to be sitting on the bench. Now watch this beautiful block as Singleton comes up, overcomes Chris, all leather. Robinson outside and now Greg call inside on Kubek. Yeah, a little bit too physical. Greg's like a uh, blue-collar worker, a tin hat worker. Pushes and shoves. His outside shot hasn't been as effective as other years, but it'll come back. That's great. Kubek, number 22 for Duke. Uh-oh. Breakdown offensively. Well, uh, Notre Dame has a slam dunk inbounds play negated. Singleton, Singleton called for a moving pick, setting it up. It's on the right of the screen, or the no ball side of the screen. It's a down pick. See the pick there? That was illegal. I don't want to compliment these zebras too much, but that was also an excellent call. 17.06 to play in the first half. Hurley takes a look down low and goes out to Henderson. Notre Dame in a man defense. Alley oop should work. Nope, didn't throw it high enough. Ellis he had Ellis, steps the ball. He had Ellis sealed. Christian Lake had him sealed on his outside hip. Change of quarterbacks now for Notre Dame. Bennett is in the game, playing against Hurley and for Singleton. Bennett will blow by Hurley a little bit quicker. He's all speed compared to Singleton. Frederick over to Monty Williams outside to Robinson at 6'9. He launches a 15-foot shot. And Lavanzo Ellis, one of the nation's best rebounders, gets it out to Frederick. But these three won't go. Inbound to Duke. 9-6 Blue Devils, 16-23 to play in the first half. Don Tricky with Al McGuire and Yuki Washington at Cameron Indoor Stadium. As Duke, leader in the ACC with a 7-1 record, takes a break from conference play against intersectional rival Notre Dame as McCaffrey, number five, is in the game now for the Blue Devils. Freshman backcourt player. Ricky inbounds the ball to Henderson as Hurley's getting a rest. Point guards are going to go hard, and Dan pressured all the way. They'll all be coming out for pit stop. 
Down in low is Henderson. And it'll be back in bounds to the Blue Devils. Well, how good do you think this Duke team can be? They've been to the Final Four three of the last four years, and this was supposed to be a reloading year. I think they're a sweet 16 team, but with the confidence of going three out of the last four years, and if Robert Fricky can come back 100%, they get a chance to go into the Mile High City. Abdul Nabi working harder than he's rejected. Down with the ball is Fricky. He's all right. He slipped. You worry about that knee, and now a travel call. I'm wondering with the humidity in here and the rain shower outside if that floor isn't getting slippery. That's a good point. It probably is with 15.56 to play and Duke in the lead, 9-6. Next Saturday, a great doubleheader when Digger Phelps and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame battle the Houston Cougars. Then the Bruins of UCLA take on the Arizona Wildcats. Students are known for their unique welcomes. Here they are throwing basketball shoes at Jim Valvano, the NC State coach. And then last week against Georgia Tech, they threw Twinkies at Dennis Scott of the Yellow Jackets. And now let's go down to Yuki. They won't be doing that anymore, will they, Yuki? That's for sure, Don. A technical foul will result. I'm with Fred Barakat, the assistant to the commissioner of the ACC. And Fred, you've taken some of the thunder away from this crowd with the ruling. Why is that? Isn't it all in fun? Well, it wasn't fun, but we were kind of concerned about the potential for injury to one of the players. So we talked to the Duke students and the uh, school newspaper, and Coach K did a wonderful job for us talking to the students as well, and we got it under control right now. Well, Fred, here's a hot tip for you. They know where you're sitting. Heads up. All right, Don, back to you. I, I agree with them, Coach. If a kid gets hit with a Twinkie, that'll knock him out. That'll starch him. <laughs> Down low, Joe Pedrick gets the ball to LaFonso Ellis. Duke is in the lead, 9-6. to six. They're playing a matchup zone. Bennett pulls up on McCaffrey, but can't get the shot to go. McCaffrey gets the ball and leads the break. He's a sharpshooter. He gets flattened. Rebound knocked around, saved nicely by Brick. He kicked it out with Fonzo Ellis at 6-9. Moving with the ball to Frederick. Over to Monty Williams, the freshman. Good foul down low by Duke as they'll make Monty get his two if he can't from the line. He made a super move that time. You know, as a as a high school senior, you played at center. Normally, you can't adjust because when you play with your back to the basket, it's awful hard to turn around and start playing facing the basket. Irish, as you see, off to a 25% shooting start. After taking an early 4-0 lead, they've now been outscored 9-2. 15-17 to play in the first half. Monty Williams at the free throw line, averaging 8.5 points a game. He's 6-7, a swing man, very confident. He was not a highly recruited player, but he really jumped up. The day he got here, he knew how to play. Very smart player. These Duke students, they'll give you something to look at when you're looking this now. They got the wave. Working on that depth perception. Watch this time down. I look for Paddock to, eat, to pick up uh, Aldo, Aldo Abdelnabi and be physical with him. Because Paddock is expendable to give his five personal fouls. Let's see if he is. Bobby Hurley back in the game now against Elmer Bennett. Here's Layton, who also got some rest. There he is. <laughs> They're doing the dance. Notre Dame with a tight man defense. Brian Davis with the ball. Had a big game a week ago against Georgia Tech. Career high 16. McCaffrey can hit the three. Jameer Jackson, one of Notre Dame's best defenders, now down low to Leitner. Nicely done by the Blue Devils as they extend their lead to 11 to 7. Give coach credit. High post to a low post. Joe Frederick tried to drift off to the weak side. Wasn't quick enough doubling down. Now a break for Duke. Way ahead of the pack is Brian Davis. He had Hurley a half court in front of him, but took it himself. He paid off with the hit in 13-7 Duke. I think Davis should have given it to Bob Hurley that time. Hurley sure gives it to everybody else. Christian's being a little bit physical with Ellis. Combination D. Now Digger Phelps then sends some new troops. And in comes the pit bull to neutralize the physicalness. Pitbull Kevin Ellery in the game. Robinson back in. 
Sophomore Damon Sweet is in, part of the Texas connection. Oftentimes, the man who inbounds the ball for Notre Dame youth ends up shooting off the inbound play. Particularly when it's Frederick inbounding. Last touch by a Duke player. It'll be inbounds to Notre Dame with 14.02 to play in the first half. Now, this is a type of game for Ellery. He's number 35, has a very broad um, rear there. And that's why they nicknamed the kid the Pitbull. The Pitbull gets it in that paint. It's going up. Here's Bennett firing. And he strokes on Hurley. Two point Number shot. Four point lead for the Blue Devils. <laughs> there he is on Leighton. He's bumping him every time. Duke is unbeaten at home this season, 9 0. As Abdul Nabi hits, Notre Dame is only 3 and 6 on the road. Duke by six. As I said from the top, Don, Notre Dame needs a big road win. They match up good. They could win this one. Duke doing a great job doubling down on the ball. And here is Robinson. Turnaround shot tipped by Leitner. A fight for the ball inside. And it's ruled inbounds to the Blue Devils. As Krzyzewski makes a double substitution. Henderson's back in the game. And Thomas Hill comes in. Both teams have that multiple rotation. Notre Dame goes back 11 men. Duke can go about nine. It's last night at practice, Al Digger was talking about he wanted to do line changes in this game like hockey to keep the running game going. He was hoping the point total would be over 100. Well, we got the right color blue out there. Abdul Nabi off the front of the rim. Rebound goes to Ellis, averaging over 12. Alley -oop. game. Oh, the perfect alley-oop was miscontrolled. Bennett to Sweet, and here comes Hurley back the other way. The floor seems to be slippery. There have been some slipping and sliding out there as Henderson goes up and a whistle stops play. He was traveling before the shot. On this alley-oop is a perfect pass. It was just mishandled. There he goes up. Just lost the handle. Think of that coat's going to come off before the game ends. Also, I believe there'll be a technical foul call before the game ends. Elmer Bennett pulling Elmer up off the Bennett. dribble to hit a shot. Brings Notre Dame back to within four. Bennett with four points now. Notre Dame with four turnovers. Duke has five. The technical foul will be on either bench. I'm not saying which one. You think that's imminent, though? I do. Download apps. Because it's going to be a physical game. And they got multiple fouls to just throw away. When they put Tower and Paddock in there, that's 10 fouls you can get. You had your share of those tees, Coach. Oh, well, it's part of life. Occupational hazard. He wants to do something. Hillary, it's going up. What do you got? Here's a steal by Hurley, and he's a uh, half mile ahead of everybody else. So Hurley takes it down, and Duke has his biggest lead, 19 to 11. I wouldn't blame Ellery for that. What happened that time, Ellis should have cleared out to let Ellery drive the middle. And Phelps and the Irish want to talk it over as Digger Phelps is now putting some more people back in the game. 11.49 to play in the first half, and Duke up by eight with its biggest margin so far. PGA Tour's all-time leading money winner, Tom Kite. Paul Azinger in the field of golf and greats at the 25th anniversary Hawaiian Open next weekend on NBC. And welcome back. Yuki Washington along with Don Cricky and Al McGuire. The kids on the floor will be very busy today. The humidity is starting to increase. Thus, you will see some players slipping, and the handling on the ball is getting tough. The palms are getting sweaty. Let's get back upstairs. Okay, Yuki, it really is like a warm summer day here in North Carolina. And Yuki, your forehead is starting to sweat. <laughs> That's how tough it is. The announcers are breaking a sweat. 19 to 11. Duke in the lead. Iris with the ball. Elmer Bennett, hawked by Hurley. Leitner comes up with the ball. He's got terrific hands at 6'11", and he gives the ball now in the back line to Thomas Hill. Here comes Henderson, the senior, leading Leitner, and he gets it down. The following here at Cameron. Well, you got to say that senior Henderson threw a perfect alley oop and then he sacrificed his body to save that last ball. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
There they are. Those parents will be so pleased that their children are on TV. Yeah, these guys are doing a big job. They get up there fast. I mean, it's about time we put the younger generation back into the world of chores. These guys know their job, boy. 21 to 11, Duke with its biggest margin, a 10 point lead, 11.04 to play. Long shot by Henderson. Rebound is tipped off the hand of Ellis, who fights with Leitner. Jump ball. Stays, stays down that way. Arrow points favoring Duke. Now you got to remember, unless that man stood up, unless Christian Leitner stood up, once he was down on the floor, it's not traveling if you hustle for the ball like that. That is not walking. A tip from the top, we call it sliding. And you can slide forever from third base to home. There'll be a lot of sliding today, too. There is Leitner, a sophomore. 6'11. Come the second half, Wayne Gretzky would be out there. Leitner says of this good team, we've gotten a lot better. We're going to get a lot better than this. His confidence rising with his outstanding play as he goes out now for a rest. Abdel Nabi back in the game. If I was coaching Notre Dame at this time, I'd slow it down a little, go down, open up the middle, middle down, and punch it down low. If you're going to beat Duke today, you can beat him down low. That's where Notre Dame's edge is, not in the running game. But at the outset, you said the game will be decided within three feet from the rim. Yeah, within three feet from the rim. But Notre Dame had a little bit too much, too much up-tempo game at the present time for the road. You don't play fast in the road. The road, you play slow. At home, you play fast. Of course, the reason for that is on the road, you don't want the refs to, to determine the game. At home, you do. Now, watch the banging underneath here. fouls as Robert Ricky comes back in and gets another ovation. The line, Duke is terrific on charity. There isn't a better free throw shooter around than Leitner, 86%. He's hit 140 of 162. Abdel Nabi at the line now. I don't, like, I don't like to second guess Coach K, but I don't know if I play Robert Ricky in this game with a wet ball like this. You know, that he uh, pops out again. Um, be at least a month because he was down for seven games already this year. Right. <laughs> Give you an idea how productive Leitner has been free throw shooting. He has 140 free throws made through 20 games last season through 36 games in the tournament. All-American Danny Ferry had a total of 146 free throws, just six more. Offensive foul is called on Elmer Bennett as Hurley positions himself and draws the foul. And the Irish turn it back over as Duke is in a position now to uh, blow it open. This is an Emmy. It wasn't that much. Good acting by Bob. That wasn't that much. He just reacted to it. He outfaked the ref. That was a feather touch. That belongs in the CYO, the Catholic Youth Organization, or the PAL, the Police Athletic League. But good, good acting by Bobby Hurley. Bobby Hurley. Now Bennett pressures Hurley. To no avail, who gets the ball down to Kubek who lays it in. Notre Dame is about due for a timeout as the Irish are down by 14 and Duke, everything they're doing is working. You gotta stop, Notre Dame. Stop. Catch your breath. There's a load of time left. Stop. And put the ball down low. Ellis is your star. Get it into Ellis. There you go. Take your time. Put it up. Misses. Good body check by Kubek and no call. He seemed to influence the shot. Now there's a foul call. We are now in the one and one, I believe. With 9.54 to play, Duke will be shooting charity with the bonus shot. Notre Dame, a long way from going to the bonus as Duke has only two team fouls. For one and one, number three, Joe Gregory, number 43, Scott Paddock for the Fighting Irish. This young man averages about 35 minutes a game. He's living up to his uh, clippings on the high school, played for his dad. Yep, Bob Hurley Sr. at St. Anthony's High School, the high school national champions of USA Today had him ranked number one all last year, and at the end they were 32 and 0. He hasn't played on many losers as a junior's high school team lost one game, as a senior none. Now he's on a 17 and 3 team. Why do high school coaches' sons make foul shots? 
Now, why? And it doesn't care whether they're from the ghetto or from the suburbs. It doesn't care their height or their um, or their toughness. They make foul shots. What's I'll tell the you reason what this kid that? does, Alec, because he works at it. Oh, well, everything in life, you know, it's like someone asked me, how can I be a success? I said, first get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you first got to get up in the morning, and whatever you do in life, you got to work at. That's obvious. But it's like, it's like blessing yourself before a foul shot. It helps if you're good. This could be goaltending. No, it's very close there. First get out of bed. A, a hairline call. That was an apex. It was at its zenith. Real close, but no cigar. And Duke has inexorably extended its lead to 15 points, a 26 to 11 lead. Notre Dame needs to get something going on offense. They went at a running game. What they've got is a stagnant half court game. Duke has taken away their running game. You do that by hitting the shots, which Duke has been doing. Ellis gets one down, much needed to go to the line to try for a three point play. Last two times down, they do what they're supposed to do, hit the ball into Ellis. I think they've got to get this running game out of their mind for this particular uh, afternoon. They've got to say, hey, let's play off the shoulder. We won a national championship. No, they didn't win. Miami won the national championship last year in football. But let's play off the shoulder. Let's cut this thing down to about eight points by halftime. Bonzo gets a friendly roll in Cameron, and it's 26 to 14, Duke by 12. Henderson with a sweet move off the dribble, a spin shooting move, and Bill Henderson, the leading scorer for the Blue Devils, gets two more, and Duke leads by 14. If they end up back in Denver this year for the final four, it's because Henderson changed his mind this summer and came back to school for his senior year. Bennett driving to the basket. It won't go, but down to Ellis. And they give a foul call on Robert Bricky. First down, Bricky. I think this is an illegal screen down this end. Watch. See, uh, see Greg Kubek come in. Can we show that again? You cannot move. You've got to station both feet down if we can get another angle on that. Here we go. You've got to be stationary. See, he's not stationary. That is illegal. A no-no. Hand in the cookie jar. Ellis with five points. Notre Dame's leading point producer with almost 17 points a game and over 12 rebounds. Shevsky called him at their team meeting yesterday. Well, Ellis, one of the best rebounders in the country. You've got a box in honor of Gillis. Now what's going to happen, the next time down, if Ellis has his thinking cap on, he'll cook, kick the ball back out to Joe Frederick and let him have an outside pop. And that will make Duke make some adjustments. Ah, shoot it up, son. Good, good. If that didn't go in, they would have shot again. But Leighton has stepped into the paint, into the blue. Duke by 12. Down low to Bricky. They give a foul call on Frederick. Yeah, Frederick can't handle Bricky. Bricky's too physically strong. Plus, Frederick was on his rear end. When you play a guy like Bricky, you got to play his thighs, not his rear end. It'll be one and one. Frederick looks like he just came out of the pool. Number 21, Robert Bricky, the senior captain of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Brick to Bricky. Yeah, not often. I think we got Allah that time. Ablin Labby. Tried to. Oh, yep. they put it on Christian. Tried it now. Well, Bricky's a little rusty from the foul line from his uh, seven, eight games sitting out. Big basket right here for the Domas. Notre Dame. That was only the first foul on Leitner. Singling back in here is Frederick. They were really concerned about his shooting. He had 23 against Duke last year. No, no, Joe. No, Joe Frederick. That wasn't the shot. Then you're coming back in the game. Have patience. You're the senior. You're the leader. Ricky, bad knee and all, going up to get the bound. Now watch when he lands. No, no, he didn't. Yeah, watch when he, oh, we can't fall all the way down. See how he kept his bad leg out? When he, he land on the good leg, you know what that means? He's not ready to play. 
That was the coach's tip. To always have a fellow with a bad leg take a jumper in front of you. If he lands on both feet equally, then he's ready. If he favors the good one, then he's not ready. Duke, dogged on defense, hawking the ball, doubling down when it gets low, and shutting off the inside game. And Bricky comes down with another defensive board. Goes to Hurley. Duke, 28 to 16. Leitner against Robinson, and a good play by Keith Robinson. And here comes Notre Dame on the run. Elmer Bennett looks to the passing lanes, trying to search out the open man. He goes to Keith Robinson. And again, the Irish go cold at their end. A fight for the ball. And we will have a check of the possession arrow. It's to Notre Dame. Stay down with Notre Dame with the arrow. 7.37 to play in the first half. After Notre Dame took a 4-0 lead, Duke is now up by 12. You Remember the days when we were kids and used to get together to play sports and have some fun? Well, now that we're grown up, Kenny Rogers has invited the guys over again and there's some of today's best athletes and entertainers. Michael Jordan, Jimmy Connors, Smokey Robinson, Larry Bird. The Kenny Rogers J.C. Penny Classic, next Sunday on NBC. Frederick taking a Hail Mary shot here, but I want to talk about the good leg, bad leg. Watch Bricky go up. Good leg, good foot, bad foot, not ready to play, not ready, R-E-A-D-Y. Very nicely done, coach. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I spent 25 years being a coach. Number five, Keith Tower, the Notre Dame. Notre Dame, as you see, came in as a very good shooting team, 53% as a team for the season, but today, and Duke's defense has had a lot to do with the Irish held a 6 of 22 field goal shooting. Should get a chippy shot off this. Let it go. There you are. Yeah, might have got a piece of that shot by Bennett. Here's a foul call inside on Lafonso Ellis. Yep. Lafonso needed a saddle at that, a saddle oh, that time on Leighton. Number 20, Lafonso Ellis. Yep. His first, first Lafonso's out of position. Should just let this go. Too much contact. Christian Leitner, number 32 at the line. Leitner at the line. It seems that Notre Dame has stopped the bleeding. Now they got to get into the afterburn and start scoring. Leitner shooting for his fifth point. Rebound to Lafonso at 6'9. He can sky. Here comes Frederick on the run as Hurley picks him up at the perimeter. Ellis will stroke the three from time to time, and he knocks it down. That's only two, not three. His foot was on the line. Yeah, foot on the line. It is a two-point field goal, and it's a ten-point lead now for Duke. Nine points for Lafonso Ellis of Notre Dame. You pushed off, Robert Bricky. You pushed off. Even though you got a bad leg, you pushed off. Watch this. Watch the push-off. Not yet. Keep going. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. There. That was the push-off. Oh, I wish I could referee some of these games. You used to scout officials, though, didn't you? Yes, I used to keep books on officials. That was in the late 60s, early 70s. Officials, like everyone else, they go by habits. Some like to favor charging, other favor blocking. If you have a quick whistle, I'd go to uh, a zone. If you had a slow whistle, we allow action. I go man to man, aggressive. But I, um, what, what happens in this type of a thing? Uh, Officials ref more than you coach. They do it about three, four times a week. Notre Dame now is on a seven to two run over the last two and a half minutes to get back in the game. They were down by 14. 28 18 game now. It's 6.54 to play in the first half. Big thing now Notre Dame's also in the one and one, and they're only down 10. Now, if they can break that double digit now, and there's, there's a ton of time left, it seems this game's going on forever. It has not been the running game that Phelps of Notre Dame had hoped for. It was for a while, Don, and that, thank God it didn't continue. It got up to about 14 points. That's the first point of the day. The senior guy, Joe Frederick, a man that the Duke coaches emphasized in their drills yesterday and in their scouting report is a man that can hurt him. He's done it the last two years with 44 points over the last two games against Duke. The reason
reason I say thank God is because as an announcer, I don't root for teams. All I root for is close games because yes. close games make good announcers. <laughs> Close enough, you don't even need announcers. Yeah, the blowouts. Man to man, hard by the Fighting Irish. Double down. That's Leitner. They did not hit breakaway rims. Tower with the rebound. Now Notre Dame runs, but Duke defends back. Here is a down to court throw. And Ellis can't get it to go, and he might have injured himself coming down. Alfonso Ellis is up, but he turned his ankle. So not only was it an expensive miss, no bucket on the alley-oop slam drive, but Lafonso hurt his ankle. He seems to be all right, yeah. though. An excellent pass by well, Bennett. Well, 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 Sometimes the ball player gets nervous when he's that high in the air. He misses an obvious dunk, but I think with the man behind him, might have just touched him very slightly, and he had fear. Here's another look, one more. And you get fear. That's why he held on to the rim. He thought he heard steps in back of him. And Dig is going into his uh, coaching look, game face. Bobby Hurley at the line with six points. One of two from the line. He has no fouls. 18 years old. And he's been the starting point since the day he walked in here. Notre Dame has missed two alley-oops. Not as Digger draws him up on the board. It, they look good going up, but on the way down, something went wrong. They hit iron. So it is now a 30 to 20 game, Duke, with six minutes and 15 seconds to play in the first half. Early playing good man to man. Now he's on Bennett. Bennett's quick. They switch off so well on the perimeter against Frederick and don't allow him the three-point shot. Singleton with the ball has not taken a three-point shot this season. Here's a steal by Thomas Hill. Freshman from Lancaster, Texas. Out to Hurley. Into Leitner. And it turns over to Notre Dame. This time down, what's happening is Towers is boxing up the middle, being down low with Ellis. Towers in the low position should pop out to the high post and then feed Ellis down low. Turnovers even now, Al. Nine turnovers for each team. Alfonso moves on Leitner. Ball tipped away by Hill and picked up by Christian Leitner. And outlets to Hill. Henderson. Three if it goes. It did not. But Davis with the offensive rebound. He stepped on the baseline of the floor. Davis has a real active body, a good ball player, outstanding on the defensive end, but can score as he showed us against Georgia Tech last Sunday. To the turnovers, 10 each side. To this point has not been a thing of beauty. One of the reasons is the multiple substitutions on both teams. Trying to stay fresh Frederick for the second half. Nice down low feed to Ellis. Didn't get the shot. Again, a good foul by Duke as Thomas Hill gets him on the arm and makes him go to the line to get his two. Nice entry pass here. All dunk. Makes contact. There's another look. There's a bounce lead down low. And Lafonso heads to the line. Duke's biggest lead in this game was 15 points. It was 26 to 11 at one point. 15 point advantage. Now Lafonso Ellis, the big sophomore, looking to cut it to eight. I thought that should have been one shot and goaltending, personally. Ellis has been in the news, as you may be aware. Reportedly, there's allegations that he was illegally recruited by Illinois and turned down those illegal recruitments, if indeed they were so offered. But there have been reports that the NCAA has investigated him as part of a question and not investigated him. There's no charges or any pending against Ellis, but there is an ongoing investigation of the University of Illinois basketball program, which could result in a heavy hit from the NCAA. Outlet pass goes to single into three on two break. Power on the right side, passing lane. The ball is tipped away. And it'll be a goaltend. Henderson goaltended. Nice break. The wings have stayed wide. He fakes the pass to the left, and there's the goaltending. Down to a seven-point lead. Singleton with six. 
Watch out for the five count. Good pass. Real good. And Duke comes right back, catching Notre Dame out of position, and the Blue Devils now have a nine-point lead. They want to take Bob Hurley low. There it is. See, if you take Bob Hurley low, they got a double team. You got troops hitting the deck here. And wow. Elmer Bennett throws in a line drive. Line drive. That was a close hang. And there's the technical I told you about. Technicals on Coach K. Two shots. Look at Coach K. Is That's a Gene Keating move from Purdue. Off comes the coach. There'll be more than one technical. This game's being played in the steam room. Yeah. And it took a lot of guts. That's a very young official that called that technical. First free throw attempt by Frederick doesn't go. As Coach K is on fire. What noise! Quickly silenced, and now Notre Dame gets the inbound possession with a two point hit. The Irish can cut it to four or less if they make the three. Yep, they had a chance for a six point spread. Two Duke might have gotten four they could get. They missed the first end, so it's a five point spread if they score now. You never get a technical foul when you have the ball. You always get technicals when the opponent has the ball. Interesting. Possession of the ball is worth 1.1. That's 1.1. Then it pulls up again. Too much on it. Knocked over to Bob Hurley. And here comes the Duke Blue Devils on the run. As Hurley is defended by Bennett. Thomas Hill, his dad, won a bronze medal. 72 Olympics in Munich as a sprinter and as an assistant AD at the University of Oklahoma. Number 25, Thomas Hill. Lock stop down the foul with 341 to play. Ellis now with his second foul. Five Notre Dame players with two. Ellis, who you see, Frederick, Singleton, Williams, and Bennett all have two. Three Blue Devils have two. Kubek, Ricky, and Brian Davis. Hill's also a good defensive player. He really put the clamps in the second half on Dennis Scott from Georgia Tech, and that's not an easy thing to do. Abdul Nabi at the line comes from the same high school as a former Notre Dame All-American, now the NBA, Kelly Trapuca, Bloomfield, New Jersey. Abdul Nabi was born in Egypt, came with his family to this country in 1971 when he's two and a half years old. Well, he's the second field goal percentage leader in the ACC. The leader is a kid named Davis from Clemson. Now, what? watch Coach K here. They won't let him out of the box in there. Now he starts giving us a <laughs> Sally Ran. <laughs> Back in a moment. This job. College basketball is brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement. And by Sinex Ultra Fine Mist, the nasal spray that goes up and stays up. Back to Cameron. Let's go down to Yuki. Okay, John, thank you very much. During the last time out, Coach K got his team together and he told them, don't worry about the officials. Don't worry about myself. I'm into the game. You stay into the game. Continue to play aggressive basketball, and the calls will go our way sooner or later. Back to you. All right, Yuki, right on the story. Coach McGuire predicted at the outset there would be a technical foul in the first half. He didn't want to say which way, but it went Duke's way, and Notre Dame is back in the game down by eight after trailing by 15. There's the right set. Teak Tower high and kicked down to Ellison Tower. There's the freshman. Leitner, as Notre Dame continues to shoot in the low 30s. Leitner with a defensive rebound, and now Hurley looks to set the offense. Tower back in the game for Notre Dame. Three guard attack by Duke, around the perimeter. Notre Dame trying to set one to a matchup zone. Hurley with a three try, and there's a foul call down low. It's the foul call against Abdul Nabi at halftime. State Farm's rules of the game. One of your personal favorites, Al, that 
attention. Oh, don't get me aggravated. Please don't get me aggravated. All right. If that rule doesn't come out, I'm, I'm a monkey's uncle. And I'll tell you another thing, is that I'll take my coat off if they don't stop taking that rule. And the other thing, Patrick Ewing at halftime, we always say what Patrick Ewing did for Georgetown. I remember doing a show with Patrick Ewing in high school in Boston, and he couldn't handle it. And as he finished his fourth year in Georgetown, you watch at halftime how he handles the interview, how they educate him. So that was a two-way street. How about how he plays, too? Well, that was automatic. Every night he gives it to you, everything he's got. is a standout in every way you can be. This guy's... If he, I don't know if they rate him above Elijah on yet, but he's certainly the rising star center in the NBA, along with Robinson. One of the reasons he's so good as a youth, he played soccer. So he has eye-foot coordination, which very few Americans have. Americans have eye-hand coordination. How do you like that one, Don, baby? That's very good. I think he was born in Jamaica, Patrick. Right, right. Zoned by Notre Dame. Seven-point lead for the Blue Devils. Henderson with the ball against Elmer Bennett. Very hot, humid day in Cameron Indoor Stadium. Both coaches going to their bench often as Abdel Nabi starts, and they'll call a trip on Tower. Duke's scouting report on Notre Dame's big men, Tower and Caddick, was take the ball at them hard, they'll foul you. Absolutely right. Pete Gaudet with a very detailed scouting report, and that was one of the Duke game plans to go at the Notre Dame big men when they're in there, Tower and or Paddock. Going to the line now is Abdul Nabi having his best season as a senior he's averaging just under 14 points a game very good shooter he's a 59 percent career shooter for the field one of the raps on Aller is that he's inconsistent some days you go out and watch him and he's the greatest thing around the next day he's just average 11 points a day for Allah and he is seven for seven from the line Perfect from the line. Duke with the load of free throws, and it is now a 36-27 game with 2.40 to play in the first half. That's the game clock in the lower right-hand portion. Frederick has to get in this game. He's their co-captain, along with Singleton, Tim Singleton. The pit bull launches one, gets his own rebound, and gets it down to Ellis. Nice pass. Pit bull can play some of that tight end for you. Kevin Ellery. Shuffle off the Buffalo. There's the 2-3, two, 1-2-2 two, two zone. They want to overplay Henderson. The lead breaking three. You got to shoot him from there, Bob. No, you can't allow that. Hey, that well, you can't allow him to shoot from there. No way. Leitner doing it textbook style inside, boxing out, going up, and with a putback gives Duke a 38-29 lead. Christian Leitner has scored six points for the Blue Devils. Get Leitner on the arm. Coach K will be up again. <laughs> I think I, I think they should take Christian out. There's only one minute and 48 seconds left. Get him out of there. Don't have him pick up another foul. Okay, here he is. He's sending in Kubek. Some people may not be aware of where Digger Phelps got his nickname, Richard Digger Phelps. Kubek comes over to the bench. His father was an undertaker, Digger Phelps' father in Newburgh, New York. Thus the name, and his girlfriend, Digger says, always had fresh flowers. <laughs> As they say, he's the last guy to let you down. Right. <laughs> Family motto is cheaper and deeper. Oh, that, that, that sounds like Milton Berle. I think he gets the tie award today, Coach Phelps. He's certainly a contender for the tie award. Total fouls is Elliot Cal. Furiously totals the numbers up to 22. Notre Dame has 12. Duke has 10. So we're going to be losing some troops as the game wears on if this foul pace continues. Look at the lead from Hurley to Henderson. And down to Kubek undersized. Oh, working great, harder. And great great Kubek puts it back up to give the Blue Devils an 11 point lead. Kubek gave two mambo fakes that time. Get everybody up in the air. Tower strokes it down. They expect a lot from Tower. He's a 6'11 sophomore from the Pittsburgh area. I don't think they expect him to be shooting from 16 feet out facing the basket. Well, he hit it, so maybe they'll let him do it again. Now, he's a back-to-the-basket player. That's right. Henderson fires. In and out. Rebound to Ellis. The Irish try to get closer now. Duke holding to a nine-point lead. Kick out to Frederick. 
Shoot Rebound the ball. Rebound to the guard, Singleton. Shoot the ball fast, you can get two possessions. Ah, they're not thinking, they're not thinking. I know they're both great academic schools, but they're not thinking. You gotta think off the 45 second clock. Now they won't get another possession. Notre Dame won't get another possession. There's a possession. three by Frederick. He can't find the mark, but look at LaFonso Ellis go up and not get it down. Nice rebound by Bricky, and he was tripped by Tower. Now they're pointing to Ellis. Tower put his hand up. Let's we'll see who the foul's on. The thing I was trying to explain to you all, at 45 seconds, usually whoever gets it under 45 plays for one shot. Don Ellis. Tower puts his hand up, Al, hoping they'll give it to him, but it's on Ellis. It's See, caught him sticking his right leg out there, trying to get balance. Watch it, his little, little sly move, then he takes it back quickly, but Bricky's down, and he's on the charity line. Good second look. Our producer today for NBC Sports is David Neal, our director, the old buckaroo, Bucky Guntz. The executive producer of NBC Sports, Terry O'Neill, and the coordinating producer for college basketball, John J. Filippelli. As it is now a 41-31 game, Duke. Ricky on the home court gets a victory lap and in. On the free throw attempt, 33 seconds to play. Look for show Joe Frederick. Take an outside shot with about six seconds to go. Joe's got a big sweat going he might be running on a low tank at this point Notre Dame had a very very intense practice here last night they looked like they played the game when they got done now with too much on it Abdil Nabi with 14 left what are you taking that shot for holy mackerel Henderson Loses the ball, they get it down court, but throw it away, and now it comes back inbounds to Duke with two seconds left. And I can assure you from way back there, they'll have a play. Well, what, what they'll do is they'll float the ball, they should float the ball high towards their own basket, and let a scramble develop. Both teams are in a one-on-one. -on -one. They should float it down to Allah. Let's see. No, Greg, throw it down to Allah, all the way down, Greg. No, they're not going to. Throw it all the way down, all the way down. Oh, no, all the way down. McCaffrey throws it, man. It could have been a Hall of Famer if he knocked that one in. <laughs> 42 to 31, the halftime numbers as the Blue Devils up by 15 at one point. Saw their lead cut, now it's 11 at halftime. Let's go down to Yuki. Okay, now thank you very much. So Digger, you climb back. Turned it over plenty today. Duke leads the ACC in forcing turnovers. But you know, you can catch Duke in the back door. And Digger wanted to do that, because when you turn over a lot, that means you're overplaying, especially the passing lane. So the guard dribbled towards the wingman, wingman fakes he's going that way, and then goes baseline, you bounce it in for a back door. But it hasn't been successful for Notre Dame, because what also Duke does, when they do that, they rotate down from the weak side. Notre Dame opening with two point guards in the game, two quick back line players, it's Bennett and Singleton. As Duke inbounds the ball. Notre and Dame starts in the zone. Yep. Back in a 2-3. And a quick call early. Oh, and Robinson's hand was on Henderson's hip. Keith Robinson, Robinson with a second personal foul. They might be going to Robinson's son. They have to get points from him. 15 point a game score with none. Here's Hurley. Cautiously surveys the defense and takes it back out to set the play. Abdel Nabi, Kubek was zigging, and Abdel Nabi was looking the other way. So Notre Dame gets its first possession of the second half, trailing 42 to 31. Blue Devils playing that tight man defense throughout the game. Let's see if we see a slower pace, which I think they have to play to get into this ball game. Monty Williams, the freshman, had limited first half playing time. Bennett puts Abdul Nabi up, no foul call, fight for the rebound. They call a jump ball. Dig is like upset. came over the top. Dig is upset about the call. The ball stays down with the fighting Irish. Inbounds it goes to Elmer Bennett. And Bennett hits two. Duke's lead now cut to 42-33. Eight points 
for sophomore Elmer Bennett from Houston, Texas. Man to man, I got against the ball outside underneath your own basket to swoosh. Leitner with good hands, ball tipped away nicely by Robinson as Hurley's rocket pass seemed to be high. Nice block that time. Watch. Reaches over. Here it comes. That's Robinson in back of him. Sends its lead to 12 as Phil Henderson has now scored nine points for the Blue Devils. Ellis hopped inside, gets the ball to Robinson, and finally Keith Robinson scores on Leitner. Robinson and Leitner, the two top players that come out of the Buffalo, New York area in recent years. Matched against each other. Around to Henderson again. Nope. Kubek went for the three. The reason you see him more threes is because Notre Dame is playing a 2 3 zone. Yep. And they're not moving up in the ball fast enough. If Notre Dame lacks something, they lack foot speed. And now the Irish throw it away. I don't recall Notre Dame having any three point shot today. They have none. Well, I know they didn't make any. They might have taken one or two. Staying in the zone. And obviously, Duke counters with Kubek, Henderson, and Hurley outside the perimeter. Any other three can hit, plus this guy also. Well, Fonzo Ellis rebounds. Now Notre Dame runs, kicks it out to Bennett. Down low. And Williams looks up an errant shot. Had an open shot to score. Now Hurley leads the break. Down low to Henderson. Rebound comes in, bounds to Notre Dame. Bobby Hurley. Started this day only five assists behind the freshman record for the Duke University Blue Devils after just 20 games, a record held by Amaker. He'll probably surpass Amaker's freshman record today, and by the end of the season, he'll probably have a Duke all time record. Well, one thing is helping Bobby Hurley is Amaker's an assistant coach here. <laughs> yeah, he's a good one. Great backcourt of Dawkins and Amaker. Here's Leighton with the defensive board looking for the outlet, and he hands off to Hurley. Singleton goes for the steal, and the official calls him for a reach-in foul. Fouls on number 10. Singleton in his first. Check the scoreboard around college basketball today. Missouri, the number one team in America, having little trouble with Colorado playing at Columbia, Missouri. Arkansas standing tall again. A tough win, overtime victory over Texas in the Southwest Conference. Kubek working down low. He looked like he was hammered, but no call. As Bennett goes the other way for the Irish. Lead goes to Lafonso Ellis. You remember that slam miss earlier. This time he gets it down. Notre Dame trails by 11. 14 points for leading scorer Lafonso Ellis. Should have a little patience against the zone. They get a nice three-point shot if they do. Ellis is high in the game. Abdel Nabi has 12 for Duke. Kubek keep going to that corner and take it from there. That's it. The big time stroke, isn't it? Velvet touch off the dribble for Greg Kubek. If you're going to do anything here, they know the danger should go to a combination, put a man to man on Hurley. Cut off the head, the body dies. Jump ball. It will go this time to Duke. Another final, Ohio State, with maybe its biggest win of the season, beating 12th ranked Louisville by three at Columbus. An overtime final. Matt Kilcullen, the assistant coach in the back, counseling the freshman, Bobby Williams. See, the last time down when he tried to come in the back door, if he was a sophomore, a junior, or senior, he would have taken the foul. He got a two shot foul. Always go for the foul, then put the prayer up, and maybe it'll drop in. Ricky gets it out to Hurley. Quick kick out to Robert Ricky. And Duke extends its lead to 15. You remember they led 26 to 11 by 15 in the first half. 2 3 zone is not the answer. We'll see a new face after this timeout. 
So the Irish in deep trouble now call timeout to regroup if they can. It's Tuesday afternoon in Ford County. Darn the thing about life here in Ford County. You'd think with a name like Ford County, people would prefer Ford trucks. Au contraire, people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. All we said we were on the cutting edge. Isn't that the darndest thing? Could it be we're the bellwether of major societal shifts? It's mind-boggling. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Today's truck is Chevrolet. You sound miserable, honey. Oh, I'm gonna make some impression during my interview tomorrow. This will help. Oh, nightclub. This isn't my nightclub. This is a blue box that says nighttime. Only NyQuil is NyQuil. How do I know I will be up all night coughing and sneezing? How do I know I'll be okay for my interview, honey? honey? She needs NyQuil, the real nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can rest medicine. Oh, it's relief honey. she trusts. When you've got your power stroke going, nothing's gonna beat you. Introducing Power Stick Antiperspirant. 24-hour protection in just one wide stroke. New Power Stick from Fabergé. The product. The proving grounds. The results. STP gas treatment is the edge. Next Saturday, a great doubleheader when Digger Phelps and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame battle the Houston Cougars. Then the Bruins of UCLA take on the Arizona Wildcats. Here's Notre Dame's 2-3 zone. The three guys back here. What Duke is doing is putting three perimeter players. From the outside, they split it. And automatically, you're going to get a chippy shot. And this is what happens. I guarantee you will not see Notre Dame this time out in the 2-3 zone. Kick it over to Bricky. That's all she wrote. Curtains. <laughs> Yeah, we recall vividly the brilliant shooting of Bobby Kremen's Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech in the second half against Duke in this building. They shot 19 of 26, 73 percent, only to lose by two at the end. Here's a long lead, loud low to Damon Sweet. That's what I told you earlier. That's the back door. Duke overplays you. That's where North Carolina gives them trouble when they're going against them. Of course, North Carolina loves to go back door. Too much hands on Robinson. Too Robinson, a reach-in foul on Leitner. Let me show you the back door here. See the man go back? Ricky double team. Let's show that again. I should put this on the illustrator, but I won't. Let's show. Oh, we're back in action. We'll... Back to live action as Henderson drives to drive. It's knocked away by Elmer Bennett. Here we go again. Here's... Here we go, back door. See Ricky overplay. That happens when you overplay defensively. 15-23 to play in the game. Duke by 13 points. Blue Devils led by 11 at the half. And obviously, Notre Dame's out of the 2-3. Nice feed, nice kick out. Ricky blows right by Robinson, but he's short. And then, Abdelnabi puts it back up and down. And the Devils again go up by a 15-point margin. Robinson from Notre Dame has to get more physical underneath. Very soft defensively. Nice block. Robinson rejected by Abdul Nabi, then Damon Sweet with his second field goal and two trips. 13 point Blue Devil lead. Singleton against Hurley. Singleton did a good job against Chris Jackson for the most part. But Hurley keeps assisting, and now the Devils extend their lead to 57 to 41, their biggest advantage. Whenever you see the net go over the rim like that, you know what that means? A real switcher that you didn't touch any of the iron. It spins that net around. When you do that, you know you're a good shooter. Anderson with that big hit now has 12 points for the Blue Devils. Trying to set up back door again. Be aware of it. Anderson with the steal from Bennett. Loop lead to Leitner. And the Blue Devils are cooking now. We're getting near blowout time. Got to read there.
The big break Notre Dame has is there's so much time left to get back in the game. There's a lot of getting back to do, though, Al. Down by 16. It's, and Kubek, dead eye when he's open, and he's open again to make it 61-43. Need a leader out there. Need someone to take charge. Yeah, they do not have a go-to guy. They're not getting it down low to Ellis, who's their best player. Duke's doing, taking care of that. They're doubling him up at every opportunity. Kubek's on him, body checking him. Singleton trying to get it to Ellis, but Kubek fronts him and Leitner's behind him. Call the foul on Henderson. Duke is not only a good home team with nine straight wins this year, no defeats. They're also good on the road. They're six and two on the road. Got to win on the road to do well in the tournament, as you know, Al, because the tournaments play down the road. And the yeah, so was on neutral courts. And Notre Dame won their last three ball games and averaged over 96 points a game. But they were on the run. But you got to remember, when you score a lot of points, you got to figure who you're scoring them against. Yeah, they beat Dayton, Miami, and Valparaiso. Uh, Wichita State. I wouldn't call that murderous row. <laughs> <laughs> Elmer Bennett, who twice led the state of Texas in scoring at Belair High School in Houston, at the line. Boy, this student body, they won't let you up for air. They work on every foul shot. Here they got an 18 point lead, and they're giving it. Look at that. Feels like if after you wake up after New Year's Eve. <laughs> These guys, they gotta be worth six, five, six points. They do. That looks like a hangover to a free throw shooter. 61 to 43. Duke in the lead. Hurley with the ball for the Blue Devils. Picks inside to Abdul Nabi. You gotta remember, Duke teams won't hot door. They'll grind you out. They'll keep adding on. Frederick finally gets one off the drive. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player. For each team, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. Hurley to Abdul Nabi. Oh, that was a terrible foul that time. Stops play with 12.57 to go in the game. I thought it was so foolish that they almost didn't call it. Watch the foul, the kick out here, now the push off. <laughs> That's a foul. That's a foul even in the NBA. Keith Robinson has only two points, but he comes out with four personal fouls. He's come up way short in this big game. Notre Dame very badly in need of major wins to impress the tournament selectors. did not like that shot. Excuse me, Don. McCaffrey come in. He didn't give his body time to warm up, get a slight sweat. When you come off the bench, gang, when you're on the bench, always try to pay attention to who you're going to pick up out there. But when you go in, let a light sweat come. Because defense starts right away. Offense usually takes about 30 seconds of play to start. Spoken by a winning coach, to say the least. I had a few, I had a few players. <laughs> you, don't, you don't wear that NCAA championship ring, though. With 12.54 left to go in the game, Duke has extended its lead again to 18 points. We'll come back to Cameron in a moment. If you don't want to slow down on your way to the top, because you know to make a beer as refreshing as a mountain stream, you've got to start with a mountain stream. It's the right beer. When a night on the town might last all night, call for the taste preferred at better night spots. The silver bullet, the one that won't slow you down. Ooh, it's the right beer now. At BASF, we don't make the plane. We make it lighter. We don't make the lotion. We make it smoother. We don't make the dress. We make it brighter. We don't make the carpet. We make it tougher. At PASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. PASF, the spirit of innovation. When the Rutledge family needs auto, home, life, or health insurance, they see me. I'm their State Farm agent, Billy King. They keep seeing me as I help them keep their coverages up to date 
without State Farm Family Insurance checkups. When they have a claim, they see me. And thanks to our checkups, the protection has been there. If you want to see a family insurance agent working for you, see a State Farm agent. And like a good neighbor, State yes. Farm is there. Remember the days when we were kids and used to get together to play sports and have some fun? Well, now that we're grown up, Kenny Rogers has invited the guys over again and there's some of today's best athletes and entertainers. Michael Jordan, Jimmy Connors, Smokey Robinson, Larry Bird. The Kenny Rogers J.C. Penny Classic, next Sunday on NBC. And welcome back. I'm Yuki Washington. During the last time out, Digger Phelps told his team he is not happy with their man-to-man -man defense. They're not talking. They're not putting a hand up in the face. Last night, Digger told us he'd like to get into a running game with Duke. If he's not careful, he may get run out of this gymnasium. Back upstairs. Last night, Duke said how he would like to uh, see the final score 106-102, Irish by four. Right now, it's 12.54 to go at 63.45, so that running game has not come to pass. To get to that score, we have to play till Monday night. Go, Country! We're going to put the ball in play. Bobby Hurley ready to inbound the ball with 10 points and 11 assists. He has broken Amaker's freshman assist record in just the 21st game. McCaffrey, another freshman. Rebound to Tower. Irish trying to run. Get it around to Joe, go around the horn. Nope, they're pumping it up. Frederick puts it back up. Now Alfonso Ellis has it hacked away. There'll be a call on McCaffrey of Duke with 12.34 to play. McCaffrey stripped him, but caught a piece of him. Second personal team foul against Duke, so they're on two. Notre Dame's committed five. Alfonso Ellis at the line, uh, one of the most recruited players in America, an accounting major. He led Lincoln High School of East St. Louis to consecutive AA Illinois State Championships. And that investigation with him connected with Illinois trying to recruit him out of high school, that will not become a reality to after the final four because that's the guards of the committee yet. They're still on the desk of that uh, fellow named Burks. Dick Rosenthal, the Notre Dame athletic director who's here, said any, all, any and all NCAA investigators are welcome on our campus to question any players where they think there's wrongdoing. There are no allegations whatsoever of any re recruiting improprieties by Notre Dame or any illegal acceptances by LaFonso Ellis. The charges are against Illinois, where he elected not to go. Nice move by Allah. Allah having a big game. He now has 15 points to lead the 18 points for Abdul Nabi. Everything starts with a pass. A bullet passed by Bobby Hurley. It's a nice turnaround facing the basket. Paddock isn't fast enough off his feet. Singleton ready to inbound the ball for Notre Dame, and a whistle stops play. Tower, body checking, pushed off, and it'll come back over to Duke. So the Irish misfiring on all fronts. Notre Dame coming in with an 11 and 6 record. It's tough to get in the tournament with any more than 11 losses, and they got some tough games coming up. Georgia Tech, Missouri, Syracuse. We have that Georgia Tech game up in South Bend. Please tune in. Because when you can see Kenny Anderson play, he's outstanding. I can't believe he's a freshman. You think he's about as good as ever come down the line. Out of New York, he's the only one that's truly lived up to his clipping since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. At that time, we called him Lou Alcinda out of Power Memorial High School. Good feed. A bounce feed by Ellis inside a singleton. Irish get two, but they're down by 17. It is interesting, Al, a couple of years ago when Kansas won the NCAA championship, a lot of people forget they barely got in the tournament. The Jayhawks had 11 regular season losses. Then when they had to, they were great. Well, when you got Manning, you can do anything. He was a miracle worker. Notre Dame's upcoming schedule at SMU. That's a W. Mustangs are down right now. At Houston, that'll be tough. Marquette's already beaten Notre Dame at Milwaukee. That one's at South Bend. At Syracuse, that can be a, a long day. 
DePaul comes into Notre Dame and then Georgia Tech. Duke's upcoming games, conference games against the Cavaliers at Maryland, a break against Stetson in East Carolina, then against Wake, NC State, Arizona coming in. That's a very comfortable break against Stetson in East Carolina. I like to get one of those Stetson Hatters. Stetson Hatter. Yep, they're out of Florida. Of course, you spent seven years as a head coach. The highly regarded program, Belmont Abbey. Yep, out of North Carolina. Won a lot of games in Catawba. Seven years with the Benedictine monks. They put a little stained glass window in there. Did they build up that wallet? And... <laughs> oh, no. With prayers and novenas and rosaries, they did. No, no, uh, no green stuff. No color. <laughs> then on to Milwaukee and Marquette. How good is Marquette? Um, can't possibly make the NIT. It'd be a close call. Frederick with a turnaround jump shot. 67-50 Duke. Seven for Joe Frederick, who had 21 against Duke last year and 23 points the season before. They defended him well. At the Blue Devils as Leitner puts it up. He looked like he got hammered. Leitner is shot. Aaron. And the foul call is going to be might be on Abdul Nabi. Leitner gets the foul. That's his third Ford, he took a shot. Here it is, down low. Leighton is trying to move Towers out. Towers lays his body on him. Then oh, he I pulled uh, him. Yeah. Illegal use of hands. You couldn't pull Towers down with a wrecking truck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give me that tie, digger. You'll never wear it again because you, you think it's superstitious. On Notre Dame's number 30. Well, yeah. hey, it looks like Halloween. That's orange. Orange or black. Halloween. Fouls on Notre Dame's number 20. They changed the foul call, which, in my opinion, was a good change. Because I didn't think Leighton did anything to um, Towers. So Towers a paddock out there. There's Towers out there. Uh-oh. Looks like a baseball argument there. Don't get too close. Now, you don't hear the King's English at times like that. But it was a very, very difficult moment. For the Irish thought they had a call on Leitner, and then it turns around and goes on Notre Dame's best player. And Lafonso Ellis with 15 points and 13 rebounds goes to the bench. Here's the play again. It's underneath where they're calling it. There's the push right Five there. Five on Lafonso. He's out. Robert Bricky was pushed on the baseline. We were watching where the ball was. If you could show us that once more, it would help for the audience. Here we go. This is away from the ball. On, see Bricky there? Now there's the push by Ellis pushing him out. Baseline ref called it. Boy, it's noisy in here, Don. It's noisy in here. Unbelievable. You know, it's something that Notre Dame brings to the table. There's always emotion when you deal with Notre Dame. And it seems that everybody in the country either roots for them or wants to bury them. Yeah. As they say about Notre Dame football, they have millions of people who root for them and millions more who have two favorite teams, their own and whoever's playing Notre Dame. Well, but there's no prop failure in football because they don't recruit anymore there. They select. They're going to have another great year, according to the, the information people. February 14th is the signing day. Right now, the Blue Devils of Duke. Three times in the last four years, they've been to the NCAA Tournament Final Four and looking to get there again. With a big advantage down low, they get it to Robinson, and his day is illustrated by the futility of that attempt. Trying to slam at 6'9", he missed it from six inches away. That, that's two missed slams and two missed alley-oops where they're absolutely free, nobody near them. But you got to remember, when you play against Duke and you go down 19 points, Duke doesn't change his style. 
See, when you got a, a coach like Coach K, he doesn't allow any hanky-panky one-on-one or hot dog. Where some schools, if they go up 20 points, then becomes showtime. Now that dude, good shot, excellent shot. And Tam Robinson comes right back down and gets it. Duke has five players. All five starters are in double-figure scoring for the Blue Devils with 10.05 to play. Well, nice move here. The ball hangs on the rim, and he needed a break after all the heartbreak hotel shots he missed earlier. Leitner comes out. McCaffrey does. Hurley goes back in the game. Of course, one of Notre Dame's greatest guards all time was from the same high school as Hurley St. Anthony's, David Rivers. One of the reasons Hurley got good fast is now he's getting to go one on one with David Rivers in the summer. Hurley was not recruited, only peripherally by Notre Dame. Nice, nice call by the referee there. The referee feels the game is getting a little bit out of hand. I think more of this should go on. A referee blows a whistle, says, hey, let's straighten this out. You know, very, very good move. Excellent move. See, a lot of times the ref can take a 15-second time and say, hey, they can tell before when the thing's getting out of hand. This is hurting Notre Dame. The kids feel bad. They're down, they're down 16 points. I've been 18. Showtime for the Blue Devils. Got to fix the net again. Duke is up by 18, and they're going to win by 40 if good. they can. They won't good. let up. Good call. Good call. Good call. student body would just slow down a little bit. I mean, it's like the, it's like the Christians and the Lions, the gladiators, the student body. I mean, they stay high from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. And they're great. I'd love to have them. There's no student body like Duke at home. If there is any. It's the Notre Dame student body at South Bend. They get the best six man in the country, both schools. I don't think anybody does it in synchronization as well as Duke. The pressure defense of the Blue Devils and the unrelenting crowd support work in tandem here in Cameron. 
That's why Duke has won 53 straight against non-conference opponents here. Plus they're good. <laughs> yeah, they're real good. They do everything right. Virtually never out of position on defense, the Blue Devils. Fantastic to watch, really, how they double up. You never see a better, have you ever seen a better school team defensively? Uh, Indiana. Oh, this, Indy's very good. Nice bounce pass across for Joe Frederick. 11 now for Joe. Another call. It, it was a good call. You see the inside, the right hand. His right arm will push away as he drives. Now, here's Bennett moving up to him. There's the right arm on the push-off. You might get a better angle from here. See the push-off there? That's an athlete, Henderson. When you can be dribbling, thinking of scoring, and using your right hand to push the guy off. Basketball athletes are the best in the world. They're ballerinas in the sky. Great defensive play by Leighton. Williams gets it back and keeps working and finally gets it down. Congratulations. Staying with the ball all the way through. That's a good trait for a freshman. The freshman with just four points. Notre Dame within 14 now. A lot of time left. Williams pokes the ball away. Here's the feed down low. Now ball gets blocked. He stays with it. Puts it up again. Comes down again. Stays with it. And lays it up. Never give up. You really got to pay the price, Hale, to get a score on Duke inside. Well, basketball's a contact sport. A lot of people don't understand that, especially down in the paint. Duke taking time off the clock now. It's down to eight minutes. Yeah, they'll work the clock every time down now. Early is rejected by Singleton. Leitner goes up, and he's fouled by Tower. So Leitner goes to the free throw line to give you an idea where Leitner is at as Coach Phelps expresses his displeasure. Leitner is ahead of all of Danny Ferry's stats when he was a sophomore, except for assists. Nice rebound, little fake, leans back out to the basket. Leitner reminds me a lot of Ed McCauley of yesteryear. You, you feel kind of sorry for him, but he, he's strong. And, and he's an excellent player. And Danny Ferry, if uh, the only difference between him and Danny Ferry, Danny's more from three-point land. Leighton is an absolutely different type player. Everyone says the second coming of Danny Ferry. No, this is the first coming of Christian Leighton. Six eleven, and Leitner might not be done. They think he could still be growing. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Tonight, you ever met anybody you didn't kill? Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. I haven't killed you yet. Lethal weapon. Tonight. Basketball is brought to you by today's truck Chevrolet. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. By Coors Light, the one that won't slow you down. The silver bullet is the right beer now. By Magnavox, smart choices for smart people. Magnavox, smart, very smart. And by BASF, the spirit of innovation. 
And welcome back. I'm with Fred Barakat, the assistant to the commissioner of the ACC. Fred, are the officials handling this game in the right manner? It seems to be getting very physical out there. I think the game is physical, but I think it's quite under control. The officials are doing a good job. In fact, right before the technical foul on Al Abdanabi, the one official had called both players together. That's good preventative officiating because he detected that it was getting a little rough. As far as that technical foul is concerned, I'm not sure whether or not it was correct because I'm not sure if, the, if there was a personal contact. If the clock is running and there's personal contact, it has to be a personal foul, an intentional foul, or a flagrant. The only way it could have been technical is if there was no contact involved while the clock was running. Okay, Fred Barrett, thank you very much. Back upstairs to Doc. And back to live action as Joe Frederick, surrounded by Blue Devils, puts up a hope tipped up and in by the freshman, Monty Williams. Blue Devils lead to 14. Very interesting, wasn't it, Fred Barrett? Yeah, but the one thing, you can never give a referee a mic, as Bearcat showed you. <laughs> There's Fred, now as I said, each time down, they'll eat some clock off. Coach K knows it could be a problem, and he's trying to just cool it down. 6.55 to go in the game, Duke 75. Notre Dame 61, Don Tricky with Al McGuire, and Yuki Washington at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Clock's down to 10 seconds. Student body joins in, gives him a count. Four, three, two, one, and you lost the ball. Nope, it got out of his hands, not like 12. In college, all it has to do is get out of your hands, I believe. Now, I could be wrong on that. Check me on that. The Irish throw it away at the other end, and it's back over to Duke with a new shot clock. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you only got to beat the clock. That's right, by just releasing the ball. So he just nipped the clock. I think I and the student body were a second off. <laughs> nice baseline move. with the head fake and the quick dribble. He only weighs 150 pounds, but he always seems to be running on a full tank, even at the end of the game. Tremendous stamina. Frederick shoots. Jameer Jackson ejected. Here comes Hurley, and he sees the Irish back, so he breaks off the break. We've got four guards out there to work the clock in late night. They'll take the clock down again for about 10 seconds, and I think this is just to cool this fire. Notre Dame shooting only 34% for the game, 22 of 64. Clock down to 15 seconds at about five. They'll start looking. Student body should start at about eight seconds. There they go. Early gets the ball over to Bricky, and there'll be a foul call on Notre Dame, or it's that Brian Davis will head to the free throw line. Where else in the world you got a couple of thousand students that give you the count on the clock every time it goes under eight seconds? It's not hard to see that shot clock, though, the way they have it positioned, but if the count does help, particularly when you know it's legit. When the other team is coming down, they'll throw it off. Oh, yeah, they, they, they'll give you a miscount. Number 23, Brian Davis. Who do you think the best team in the country is so much you've seen? Best team in the country, best start in five in the country is UNLV. There's no doubt about it. I don't know if they'll get to the NCAA tournament hole. I think they got serious NCAA problems and other things. Uh, Missouri's good. Another thing that's important, Don, is that, you know, in this part of the country, we say Big East, Big Ten, ACC, the best conference in the country this year is the Big Eight. Well, at one point in the season, they had three teams in the top four. And that's not counting the United States. Is that that's when uh, Kansas was one, Missouri was two, and Oklahoma was four. You know what happens out there? They don't lose at home. Nobody loses at home. Yeah, that's a major upset. Duke doesn't lose at home either. And Notre Dame is finding that out again as down the Irish come. Williams with a pull-up stroke. Hour fights for the ball. Good hustle by Tim Singleton that time. Irish finally going to full court pressure with 5.03 to play down 77 to 61. 
Got a quick team. That's a diamond. One, two, one. And Towers playing a one-man zone in the back. You watch Towers. They break through. There's Towers back under the basket. They'll back it out, work the clock. Good hands. Singleton with the steal. Looked like McCaffrey fouled him, but it's going to be ruled inbounds to the Blue Devils. Now well, it's coming into Notre Dame. Got to shoot from three-point land. There's just under five minutes left in the game. Down 16. Duke goes through two three zones. Give me the outside shot. Let it go, Bennett. Kick it out. Oh, Sweets, kick it out. You need three points, not two. Oh, he's going to get it off a foul. Henderson reached in, I think. Blue Devils huddle their lead now down to 77 to 63 with 434 to play in the game. Freshman Monty Williams going to the free throw line for Notre Dame. Irish got off to an eight and six start. Six losses in their first 14 games, and they won three straight. You notice now. Abdel Nabi coming back in, Don. Again, Coach K made that move to cool the situation. Kept him out for about five or six minutes. Biggest crowd Notre Dame has had is field goal percentage. They're shooting only 34% for the game. Elmer Bennett at 6 1 comes up with the ball. Leans it out. Here's Damon Sweet firing. And Abdel Nabi clears for Blue Duke. Hurley was pushed, but they're going to rule it in down to Notre Dame. Apparently, Williams got a hand on the ball. See, I think Notre Dame's having a problem for 16, 17 years. Coach uh, Digger played a off-the-shoulder game, half-court offense. The last two years, when we recruited Lafonso Ellis, he said, we're going to run. I'm not sure if that's a running team now. That was a big play, though, by Damon Sweet. Irish have cut the lead to 12 as they continue with the pressure. Up court to Leitner. 4.05 to play. Duke is led by 20. Now it's down to 12. Early to Leitner. Oh, he threw. Oh. Call him on the block in the back. I believe they called that on the freshman. I thought that Leitner got away with an elbow. Let's watch it. There's the freshman. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. See, I thought I thought he threw an elbow. Let's see that once more. Yeah, watch that again. He's be, he's obviously being pushed here. So the foul was committed. It comes to pass. Now there goes the hit. And Robinson had to go to the bench. That was number five. So the best player in Notre Dame is fouled out. Lafonso Ellis. Robinson now sits down. And Leitner's back at the line. Duke in winning 14 of its last 15 games. And then rooting out of its 15th win in the last 16. The only team to beat him during that span was the Tar Heels of Carolina, who blew him out at Chapel Hill about 15 minutes away by 29. It might have been the best thing that happened to Duke. Sometimes every now and then, you need a good licking, so you start listening to the coach again. Timeout on the floor with Duke up by 14. My poor brother Tom. Every time he tried to see what he was missing, he would miss what he was seeing. Then Tom got this amazing Magnavox TV that lets him watch one show while he checks out all the others on this remarkable little window. Hey, that's a smart window, Dick. That's what they call it, Tom. They, they call it Tom? No, no, no. They call it smart window, Tom. I don't know. I, 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 I kind of like Tom. Magnavox. Smart choice. Very smart. Smart guy out there. He bought certain teed fiberglass insulation just like I told him. It comes in easy to carry package, as I said. It's easy to install in side walls and attics. It helps the house meet the new Department of Energy recommendations and can help cut energy bills. Besides, buy 10 packages and you can get a Melita coffee maker free from certainty. Okay, so I'm a coffee hound. You gonna eat that Danish? Certainty at home in America's smartest homes. Saturday morning in Ford County. I see you got a new Chevy. Yep. 
That's a pretty smart buy when you amortize the cost of depreciation as it relates to inflation in the GNP. Yep. In fact, when compared with Ford Ranger, Chevy S10 has held more of its value model years 1984 through 88. Yep, and they say they've been worth more when you trade them in, too. A tradition of higher resale value. No wonder people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Yep. The PGA Tour's all-time leading money winner, Tom Kite. Paul Azinger in the field of golf and greats at the 25th anniversary Hawaiian Open next weekend on NBC. Do you see this white line here, right there? You see that line? Well, in the early 80s, the ACC experimented with a three-point shot from there. Then a few years ago, they moved it out to here. The pros would be out here, where it belongs is with the international rule right in there. Thank you. Finishing with a flourish. 3.58 to go in the game now, and Notre Dame will inbound the ball. Duke in the lead, 79-65. The credo of the flatting out at the outset of the season was Remembrance Denver. Coach Phelps and his co-captains, Jackson and Frederick, talked openly of going to the Final Four. The whole team spent the offseason on campus in the summer. But this would be Notre Dame's seventh loss. In 18 games, unless they pull out a miracle with 3.40 to go and Duke in control. It's getting very close in basketball, Don, that you'll have no more independence. It's not too far away. I would say about five or six years. Was your Marquette team the last independent to win? Uh, I'm not sure. I think so. But seven, Marquette seven. jumped into the Metro City Conference, and last year Dayton jumped in. Next team that go to the conference will beat DePaul in a year or two. Three-point shooting, Notre Dame has none. Duke four for nine. And the field goal percentage for Notre Dame stays low. It was 30% at the half. It's only up to 34%. Duke with an even 50% field goal shooting. You don't win when you shoot 34% down. Not often. Not unless they're all threes. Good point. Well, you know, they, they say last year in the NCAA tournament there were no teams that shot 60% from the field, but there were 24 teams that shot 40% or better from three-point line, which is equivalent to 60% from the field. It's been good for the game, really. It's yeah, made the game a little bit more exciting. Ellery had an academic problem for a semester. He's back. Obviously, his nickname is the pit bull on the foul line. Good concentration. Number 40. 325 left to go in the game, 79-67. One of the reasons they said Ella had changed the rule and went to the three points just to open up the inside a little bit more and take it away from the big guys. Well, Gabe Lemons, who will retire soon at Oklahoma City, says maybe we should go to shooting at a hole in the floor and give the game back to the little guys. There's a, there's a big guy, Abdel Nabi. Big man indeed goes up. Damon Sweet with a very soft touch. Now watch how Duke spreads out. There's no crisscrosses, so you can't double team. See him spread out. They have a man in the middle. Now it's up over the bricky, bricky three. Bobby, good feed. Hey, baby. What these guys? If his knee was right, that would have been in. Anderson with a steal now. There's Duke on the run. Blue Devils, if it's open, they're going for it. And Henderson goes and does not get it. I don't think Coach likes that. I didn't think Coach liked that. They should have worked. Uh, here's, the, here's the speed. The alley-oop going over. Now watch Fricky come down. Oh, oh, he came down in the bad leg. Do you know what that means? His bad leg as well. Starting to clear out the stars now. 2.34 left to go. Twelve-point spread. Seems like more, but that's all it is. Luke running time off. 28 seconds left on the shot clock. You call this a beat pass. You don't cross, you exchange. You don't cross, oh, you get double team. You're not supposed to cross. Come this way, see? See open back doors? Now, Henderson, get away. You go out there. Greg, go out, Greg. Henderson, pop out. We're going to get a five count unless someone goes out there. Penetrate. 
Too much hands on sweep. Bobby Hurley will go for one-on-one. -on -one. Dickie Number says, get in there, keep the pressure going. Two. Let's go down like champs. His first personal foul. Robert Pricky looking on the captain of the Duke Blue Devils. He went down, as Al pointed out, in the semifinal game with an injury against Seton Hall at Seattle last year. Duke lost that game. Seton Hall winning decisively. And Duke lost Bricky on January 6th when he went out with a knee strain, a partially torn ligament in his knee, January 6th against Virginia. Now he's back. Can you imagine Don going to three out of four Final Fours? It's hard to believe. Really. Coach K is eyeball to eyeball with Dean Smith. No one in the ACC in 28 years has gotten to it, but Coach K is eyeball to eyeball. Bobby Hurley with a big game, 14 points and 11 assists. As Duke leads by 14. Notre Dame firing currently as Leitner gets the ball out to Hurley. He likes pressure. He welcomes it. Down low to Henderson. Inbounds to Duke with 140 to play. Chanting NIT at Notre Dame. <laughs> They're beautiful. That's still a great tournament, the NIT. Well, I have many fond memories of it. You won it. I remember I did it the year. The, the Elevator Man. Yep. Root Force Thompson. Dean the Dream Memminger. Goose Brell. And the beat went on. We lost it two years earlier. The Salukis in Southern Illinois. You know who they had? The yeah, Walt Frazier. Walt Frazier. The Great Glide. Afternoon, Digger. There'll be better ones. It was good only for a moment. Notre Dame hit the first two field goals, took a 4 0 lead today. Then Duke got it cooking, at built up a 12 point first half lead, lead, led by 11 at halftime, 42 31. There's a final score in Illinois over Indiana. At Bloomington, Christian Leitner sits down. Hurry down court, down 83 to 69. Frederick frustrated most of the day, can't get a shot to go. Rebound to Kubek, over to the quarterback, Hurley. There's McCaffrey. Cook working with the ball, Joe Cook, he's a junior guard. The Kubek, who's heading home and doesn't go, but there's a foul call that'll go on Kubek with 54 seconds to play. Every student athlete in basketball since 1975 has graduated at Duke. Every ball player that has put four years under Digger Phelps in basketball has graduated. I tip my hat. And that's an interesting new mandate coming out where schools have to publish their graduation rates. That is because of Senator Bill Bradley, a Democrat from New Jersey, and because of McMillan from Maryland, the rep. 46 seconds to go, and Duke seems to have a lock on another win at Cameron. Remember the days when we were kids and used to get together to play sports and have some fun? Well, now that we're grown up, Kenny Rogers has invited the guys over again and there's some of today's best athletes and entertainers. Michael Jordan, Jimmy Connors, Smokey Robinson, Larry Bird. The Kenny Rogers J.C. Penny Classic next Sunday on NBC. Now the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player Awards for today's game for Notre Dame. Lafonso Ellis, who fouled out with 15 points and 12 rebounds, for Al Abdul Nabi of the Duke Blue Devils, who had 22 points and nine rebounds. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and also to assist students in need. Ball turns over now to the Fighting Irish with 40 seconds to play. Last year, Duke won by 22 points at Notre Dame. 102 to 80. 
Holding to a 12-point lead today, the Blue Devils have led by as many as 20 in the second half. Singled into Frederick. He fires in the face of defense put up by McCaffrey. Harris cut it to nine, but only 32 seconds left. Notre Dame called the timeout. Irish almost out of road now as they try the comeback run. I'm Bob Kerr. Coming up later on NBC Nightly News, more than 100,000 Soviets marched on the Kremlin demanding more democracy, this on the eve of an important meeting of the Communist Party. In South Africa, Winnie Mandela visited with her jailed husband Nelson today, and she says there are still some obstacles in the way of his release. And several Israeli tourists were killed in Egypt today when a bus bringing them to Cairo was attacked. Join me later for more on these and other stories on NBC Nightly News. Next weekend, join NBC Sports for three exciting college basketball matchups on Saturday. A doubleheader starting at 1 Eastern time when the Fighting Irish head to the great state of Texas to battle the Houston Cougars. And then it's a Pac-10 showdown between UCLA and Arizona. And next Sunday at 2.30 Eastern time, Dean Smith and the Tar Heels of North Carolina battle the Deacons of Wake Forest. That's college basketball at its best next weekend on NBC. This is Don... The interesting thing about those games is Arizona doesn't lose at home and they're taking on the UCLA. They were number one in some preseason polls as McCaffrey gets it out to Hurley. Irish hawking the ball and Hurley will go to the line. 24 seconds to play. So Duke and route to its 18th win of the season against just three losses. Blue Devils stand atop the ACC. Carolina's 5-2 and two at this point. Duke is 7-1. and one. Bennett has now fouled out. The three Irish starters are out. Bobby Ellis, Robinson, and Elmer Bennett. Bennett finishing with eight points and five fouls. Puts him on the sideline for the final 24 seconds. As Hurley, Cooley at the line, hits his 15th point of the day. And Duke opens up a 10-point lead. Rebound to Damon Sweet. Out to Jameer Jackson, a co-captain, driving to the hoop against Cook. Shot of the day as the Irish get one down, falling down. Joe Frederick hit it, falling back, then called a timeout, which Phelps didn't. Is there a, I think a technical foul now on Phelps. They had no timeouts left, I don't think. Maybe that was it. There's going to be another one in a minute. Uh, go easy, Digger. This game's over. Save it for another game. Frederick with that last off-balance shot. I don't know what Dig is arguing about. The kid called the timeout and he recognized it, so he had to call it. Shooting the technical foul is number 13, Joe Cook. It's a two-shot foul. Putting Joe Cook on the line, let him get in the stat sheet. You talk about Hail Mary shots. Let's see if we can catch Joe Frederick on this fadeaway. Let's see Joe Frederick do this again. <laughs> that looked like one of yours on Rockaway. <laughs> With the wind blowing. 86 76, 12 seconds to go. Duke ready to close it out. Early, quickly to Cook, who heads to the hoop. Time now. Cook puts it up at the buzzer. 